Thanks for joining us, everybody, uh, for our Coral Expeditions webinar on Tasmania. Um, I can see a, a few people signing in still. So um, thank you everyone for joining. As I said, I'll just give it a couple more minutes just to allow um, some of those extra guests to jump on in and enjoy Tom Collis's um, amazing story of Tasmania. Um, so I'll be introducing you shortly to our beautiful expedition, um, Coastal Wilds of Tasmania, um, along with one of our expert guest lecturers. Um, so he's a, a wealth of knowledge and I'm sure everyone's well keen um, to learn more about this beautiful destination. So I can see we do have quite a number in already, so I, I might get underway um, just so that everyone isn't waiting too long. Um, so without further ado, um, as I said, thanks for joining. Um, we're really excited to be able to restart back um, cruising again. Um, so those of you who do know Coral Expeditions, um, you might already know that we have um, implemented our SailSafe plan um, in order to recommence our cruising in a, you know, a safe fashion. Um, so we engaged with Respond Global for our SailSafe plan. Um, and we had a, a couple of security measures in place with that one where it was um, seven days prior, um, everyone was due to go and get that COVID um, medical pre-screening. Um, and then on 62 to 70 hours prior, or 60, sorry, to 70 hours prior, um, is the ideal time frame where we're getting everyone to do that COVID-19 PCR test. Um, that just helps to create that safe environment on board. Um, so we have all of our ships actually at present, um, all of our built ships alongside in Cairns, which is fantastic. Um, and that's because we're an Australian flagged expedition fleet. Um, so beauty with that, couple of bonuses. I mean, that allows us to be um, safely alongside here in Australian waters, ready to deploy. Um, and then also it means that um, any of our guests like yourselves doing our domestic itineraries, you don't need a passport um, for those itineraries like some other um, operators do. Um, our crew is all Australian um, crew or, or residency crew. Um, so once again, they were all here on ready, on hand um, to deploy as soon as we got the go ahead. Um, so we're actually really excited. We've gotten all the green lights and everything um, to go ahead for our Tasmania expeditions as planned. Um, so generally we would have 72 passengers on board our Coral Discoverer. Um, however, at present we're capping that at 60 um, due to some of those requirements. Um, but we're definitely um, looking forward to getting this um, fantastic season ahead. So we've been cruising in Tasmania for quite a number of years now, and um, it's definitely an area that's really close to home. Um, so you will have heard me mention the sail safe. I'll probably talk about that a couple of times throughout this um, presentation. Um, it is a very important feature just to sort of um, ensure that everyone, um, everyone's wellbeing is um, taken into consideration on board. So if you do want more detailed information though about our COVID-19 sail safe plan, um, you can jump on our website. You can see that little um, red box at the top there. Um, that's our COVID-19 information page where you can see um, lots of frequently asked questions um, and then also an idea of our self safe plan um, in more detail on that one. So as I mentioned, we've um, got the privilege of being joined today by one of our amazing guest lecturers, Tom Collis. So hello, Tom. How are you going, Ramada? Um, Very well, thank yeah. you. <laughs> yep, so I'm, I'm here uh, today in uh, lovely Tasmania, in Hobart, where I've moved to for this year. Um, usually I live in Cairns, so, <clears throat> and I've worked for Coral Exhibitions for about 10 years, and in 2016 they started doing cruises in Tasmania, and I thought, wow, I'll put my hand up for that one. And uh, it's been great, I've done some great trips, and I'm sure that uh, everyone will really enjoy them. All of our guest lecturers have got um, sort of specialist areas that they work in. My, mine is, is uh, tends to be birds and bird ecology, um, so I'm a bit of a bird nerd. But I also love all, all things in nature. I'm interested in plants. And I, I was a fisherman for a few years back in the uh, last century, and so I have uh, an interest in boats and anything maritime. So I love uh, the history of uh, you know, the explorers and their sailing vessels and that around Tasmania, and you're really aware of it in this part of the world. But, um, you know, it's a great place. I love it. Love it. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks, Tom. And I mean, there is so much history um, in the region. I was um, privileged enough to be able to do one of our expeditions last year in February. Um, apologies that I didn't introduce myself. I'm the sales executive for Coral Expeditions. 
Um, and I did one of our expeditions last year in February, and it really is such an amazing destination. So, you know, as Tom said, there's so many different elements to Tasmania. Um, you've got, you know, your sensational wilderness and the walks that we do. Um, so we've kind of looked at it um, with some pillars about, you know, the expedition you can experience. Um, sensational history across multiple areas. So there's not only is there the penal colony history, but you've got your indigenous history as well. Um, you know, whaling heritage history. There's, there's so much that goes on in um, Tasmania. Um, of course, as Tom said, um, being a bird nerd, he said, <laughs> um, amazing flora and flora. There is definitely not a shortage of those in the region. Um, and then, of course, you know, everyone's familiar with the beautiful food and wines and those fantastic tastes of Tasmania. Um, so we're going to run a 10 night expedition um, like we usually do. So that's going to be um, January through to March is our typical season. Uh, for our Tasmania expeditions, um, best time for the weather, et cetera, to be down there as well. Um, but we do kick off our series with um, our very first expedition being a special themed edition, edition sorry, which I'll touch base on a little bit more. Um, but that's our Sydney to Hobart yacht race. So that's going to commence the 26th of December. Um, there is still a couple of seats left on that one. Um, and that will sort of do a little bit of a, a following of the fleet. Um, you can watch the race, you know, as the the ship sail past you or the yacht sail past the ship rather <laughs> um, and a little bit of time down in Tasmania as well. Um, so yeah, heaps to take in. So I'm actually going to pass you over to Tom um, because this is his area of expertise as well. So fire away, Tom. <laughs> okay, so, so this is one of the places we go to, Port Davey. This, this is an, an amazing part of, of Australia. It's world heritage, so it's very special. And it's one of those parts of Tasmania. It's right down in the southwest. Um, and it's, you know, I, I, when I was young, I thought, will I ever get to see this place? Um, and I have been really lucky to see it. And the only way you can get there is um, if you're young and fit, you can walk for five days um, into Metaluca and then fly out. There's a little airstrip there with, um, as, as it says on Wikipedia, Metaluca's two houses in the bird eye. Population five with a question mark. So it's very remote, and um, and you know, this is the this is the way we get there in our ship. Wonderful, wonderful place. Really good. And um, yeah, and then you, after you do your lovely walks, um, uh, in this beautiful climate that you know, I mean, one of the things about Tassie is is summer in the rest of Australia. You, you're sweating, and then you come down to Tassie, and it's just lovely. You feel refreshed doing your walking. Walking is wonderful. Um, and you come back to this lovely boat and have, have um, you know. Absolutely, yeah. It's a, a, it's a great little spot too to um, throw a kayak in as well, isn't it, Tom? And just it is. you can put a kayak in or go for a swim. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a great, beautiful, beautiful area. Yeah, the, the hikes that we do in this region are sensational. I did um, all of them possible. <laughs> so you're Mount Wilner and you're Mount Beatty. And, um, yeah, they're just absolutely stunning. And the views that you get from the top are just breathtaking. It's great, and th this this is a little um, this is a creek, Melaluca Inlet, where we go in the Explorer. You see the lovely reflections in the water there, and um, we we got to cruise very slowly up here so we don't damage the bank. So we we go up in the morning, and you can see the bird, hear the birds, and there's uh, there's quite a few swans, black swans in this river too. Lovely, lovely place. And uh, the next one, so this was this country was originally um, Nidawoni people. And they lived here for 10,000 years without any other contact with the rest of the world. Pretty incredible. And the, part of the world heritage is they're having lived here. They're long gone, the people from this area. Um, and that little reed boat that you can see in the bottom right-hand corner there, uh, they used to build those and they used to paddle out to some of the islands out here. And if you see some of the seas here, you think, wow, and there's our little explorer in the middle one. And then on the left hand bottom corner, there is the, um, the Orange Valley Parrot, which we get to see when we go down there. And there's only a couple of places. Well, this is the only place really in Tasmania where you'll get to see this parrot. Endangered, critically endangered. Um, and some birders that come on the boat are really um, wrapped in seeing this. And this. When I went one year, there were 16 left. Um, they fly from Victoria across the Tasmania. Uh, I was delighted to hear that they uh, 60 have turned up this year. 
because there's a team that watches them. And anyway, I, I've been not talking anymore about that. <laughs> um, so we'll move on to the next point. We'll have to come on the show to find out. Um, this is again is uh, Port Davie. This is called Bathurst Harbour, and you're looking sort of north uh, across those incredible um, rugged hills where um, people walk through. You know, long walkers, but we do shorter ones, like those people on the bottom slide there who are having a great time getting their photo taken. And this is a short walk, probably uh, an hour up to there from where we bring the boat in, which is just down in the bottom right hand corner there. And you're looking across at Bramble Cove, which is um, the, the sort of entrance to Fort Davies and Bathurst Harbour. Um, very welcome water after you've been out on the seas. Very nice little bay, little cove. So. And this is when you uh, go, this is right on the bottom um, of, it's of Tasmania. And it's you can see the lighthouse through there in the gap. Those rocks are called the needles. And you look through, you can see a little lighthouse there. Well, actually, that is Australia's most southerly lighthouse. There's nothing further south than that. It's automated, but people live in those houses. There's a caretaker and his uh, wife or partner who do six months stints in there, sort of maintaining and looking after the place. You apply for the sort of after position, but just going past this area is absolutely stunning. Matsika Island, named by the Dutch, Abel Tasman. I think one of the things too I love, Tom, about, you know, cruising along this coastline around the, the Tasman region is you can actually see, you know, with the, the winds and things that come through and with the, you know, the wilds of nature that come through, just the way that they've actually, you know, forged these beautiful cliff faces. They're absolutely like a spectacular. Um, that's, right. that's right, Ramona. And I mean, you're in the roaring 40s, so that's that's what we're, we're looking at. This view here would be, if you're on that... Uh, well, you see it on all the cruises, but if you're on the Sydney to Hobart one, this is where the yachts um, come down and then turn around this island and head back up into uh, River Derwent in Hobart. And that's called Tasman Island, and behind it is Cape Killer. And, and they are the tallest uh, sea cliffs in Australia, about 300 metres high, and they are absolutely spectacular. And that's nearby, that area. That's um, uh, the totem pole that on the top. Uh, left hand corner there you can see those rocks there's rock climbers that climb those and sometimes we see them um, when we're on our cruise <laughs> climbing up them we don't have to do any of that of course <laughs> um, and then we've got dolphins we pretty will always see dolphins sometimes a hundred or so will we'll go along with the, the, the boat and the captain will say there's some some uh, dolphins out there and you've got to watch out you don't get knocked over by people with their cameras trying to get some dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 <laughs> On Tasman Island, and then this one is uh, Fluted Cape. Um, on this is on Bruni Island, and Bruni Island is where we do, we do a walk here. The fitter ones amongst us do this. This is 270 meters high, so it's pretty high. We go right to the top of that um, cliff you can see there. And Bruni Island is a beautiful island, uh, well well worth a visit. In the next slide, you will notice um, that's on our walk on the top left hand corner there. That's um, we walk out to a place called Penguin Island. Or if, if you like, you can go up to Fluted Cape, which is where the, the guy's standing there looking out um, into the distance. And then you see a little white wallaby, Bennett's wallaby. Sometimes we see these, they're very rare. And then, of course, the other photo is Adventure Bay, which has got a fascinating history. You know, Cook anchored there, William Bly anchored there, um, Bruni Don Catastro, the Frenchman, anchor there. It's why the island's named after him, and Nicolas Baudin, so French. There's lots of history around that place, and it's also just beautiful, stunningly beautiful place. Just had a request, Tom, if um, possible. It might be um, maybe your speaker volume. Um, are you able to just turn your volume up on your computer? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Is that a bit better? Is yep. Better? Sounds better. Yep. Okay. I might. Get a bit close to the computer too. Gotta okay. <laughs> gotta got love the world of technology we live in these days, hey. <laughs> of course. Of course. Okay. So we go on the next one or next slide? Yeah, absolutely. Let's let's move to the next one. Okay, and this is uh Fraser Peninsula, Wine Glass Bay. Well known spot, but absolutely beautiful. And um, again, this is one of those places with a French name in, in Tasmania. And, and I, I talk a bit about the French 
on this uh, cruise because they had a, they spent a lot of time here and we could have almost been French in Tasmania. It could have been a separate island as a French colony, but very close to that. And you'll be impressed by all the French uh, names around. The <laughs> this is at Freytonay Peninsula as well. Um, this is there's some islands south of Freytonay called Shooting Island which is named by the Dutch when they went past. And uh, we would get the kayaks out and the paddle. Some people have a swim. One of our, some of our passengers played cricket on this beach one day when we were there one year, which was fun, just filling in, having a bit of fun one day. And then there's um, Bennett's Wallaby there, and there's one of the walks we do um, up to where we look down over Lock Wine Glass Bay. Beautiful place. Clear water, stunningly clear. Um, bracingly cold, um, you know, but people swim in it all year, would you believe, in Tasmania, um, as I was discovered this year, right through the middle of winter, but um, we're there in summer, and of course it's lovely and warm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's actually um, a code that I wasn't aware of, but um, in our office, if any of our um, staff members do the Tasmania expedition, the requirement is they have to go swimming in Wine Glass Bay. Apparently it's a, it's an unwritten rule. <laughs> Yep, that, that'd be right. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be roughly about 17 or 18 degrees. So Yeah, which is pleasant. <laughs> is what I, I <laughs> and this is uh, the Franklin Wooden Boat Centre. This is um, part of our cruise. And um, a lot of the vessels there are built, um, some of these little ones are built out of Ewan Pine, which is that very, very valuable timber and regarded as the best shipbuilding timber in the world. Um, you can only use um, fallen material now. None of it can be um, chopped down. But they do it. They build it in this plank, Franklin boat, wooden boat centre. And Tasmania has got a real history of, um, of an interest in boats and sailing boats and all that sort of stuff. Um, if, if when you get in a constitution dock in Hobart, you'll see sailing boats, replica ones, you know, old square rigging. Uh, fantastic. I love it. And you'll love it too, I'm sure. <laughs> and then Port Arthur, um, the convict part of the story of Tasmania. And when we go there, we get some, we, um, our guest lecturers sort of tend to stand back and let the expert guides that run uh, our walks from here. And all of the guides that do your um, interpretation at Port Arthur are accredited through the World Heritage. So they've got a lot of training specifically about that area and they are absolutely fantastic. I've, I've heard, you know, many of their talks and every time I hear it, I, I'm still fascinated by the information they come up with and they really bring you to the scene of uh, what it was like, um, you know, what it looked like, that like that area at the top there uh, when the British arrived in the early 1800s was all wooded and they chopped most of the trees down and sent them back to London. A lot of the, lot of the buildings in London are made out of trees from Port Arthur. Which is one of the, one of the uh, these interpretive people come, which is fascinating. And of course, we get to um, have a nice um, look at some. Is that a lavender farm there? I think it is. Yeah. Um, and the other place we go to is Mariah Island, which again is just another one of those fascinating little islands off the island of Tasmania. Um, beautiful, uh, named by the Dutch, I think this one. And. Those buildings there, are, one is a commissariat hut and the other one is a sort of a cement works that was built by, a, a, I'll call him a sort of a crazy Italian entrepreneur who was there in the 1800s. And uh, there were convicts here before that and um, fascinating place. Great for wildlife on Mariah Island. And um, also we do some good walks there. They're nice um Easy walks. You see in the top left-hand corner, you can see that sort of looks like mowed uh, grass there. That's what they call, um, this is a word I learned this year in Tasmania, is marsupial lawn. So all that's mm -hmm. kept trimmed by all the, uh, there's no mowers on that. It's just kept trimmed by wallabies, um, uh, geese, and um, that's it, basically. And then you'll see a little bit of a fossil there. There's a, we go up and we see lots of fossils in the fossil rocks there. Uh, beautiful uh, rainbow cliffs, some old buildings from the convict era, a great, lovely spot. Plenty to do and see yes. on the right It's right. definitely one of my favourites. I think what I was blown away with was I didn't realise just how much wildlife and, you know, just the diversity of the terrain there. Like It is. 
probably see almost every animal possible there. It was like Noah's Ark. <laughs> right, and they and they're not they're not scared of you. You know, I mean, the the wombats there, um, you know, they're just great. They're lovely. I mean, they're such amazing creatures, wombats. Um, and the Tassie Devils, there there were um, sixty nine, I think it was, or seventy nine. Uh, Tasmanian Devils put on Mariah Island in 2012 to save them because they had that facial tumour disease. And now there's about a 1,000. Um, and they actually have one that was underneath that uh, commissary, which they had to move from. That happened because the idea is to rewire, you know, bring them back. And, uh, yeah, and those geese, you can see, they're Cape Barren geese, they were nearly extinct. And there's, they've been brought back to uh, Mariah Island and they're there everywhere. You'll, you'll, um, you'll get plenty of photos and see a lot of those. And of course, down the bottom corner, there's a, another bird <laughs> and that's a green rover, <laughs> runny fan and Tassie. That's Tasmania's own rosella called a green rosella. And a lot of people say to me, why do they call it a green? It looks pretty yellow to me. But anyway, they are called a green rosella. And the, the, the kidna in the middle. <laughs> the kidneys here are very woolly. Um, they've got a lot of fur, the kidneys in Tasmania. You notice there's not a lot of spikes on it. The spikes are under the fur. Anyway, we'll see that when we go down there because we've certainly. Got <laughs> I think there's, there's never a shortage of like amazing things to see in the region. I mean, that's what I found. There was just such a diversity. So, with like, I've been to Tassie a couple of times via land, and you know, you see some amazing stuff, but like just seeing it from a ship's perspective and some of the locations that you know we went to on the ship you know it's just to be able to access some of those unique places I think was probably my yeah. highlight yeah do you have a highlight in Tasmania for you for me yeah well I, I think um it, it's hard to beat um uh that Tasman Island area I love that area because I've walked around there a lot up to Cape Hoy and Cape Pillar and that and just sort of stand on that and look down and as a matter of fact um, I'm heading out there this weekend on a, what we call a pelagic trip um, some of my friends were going out to see some albatross um, which should be very interesting so I'm going out on Saturday the weather's good and we can see up to 12 species of albatross off that part of Australia so. wow very impressive you definitely love your birds it's a good thing <laughs> 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 a couple more little woolly guys. <laughs> I mean, of course, we've got the amazing taste of Tasmania. I mean, this little place, the Grandview Cheeses. Um, I loved heading there and getting to taste the Sheep's Way vodka that they do, which is one of their, their specialties, as well as their fantastic cheeses. Yeah, this is a great little place, and uh, it's a artisan cheese um, place. So they, they really uh, specialise in making special cheeses, and like, Ramona said they they, um, they decided because they had a product uh, whey when they're making the cheese and they what can we do with this so they decided to make some vodka out of it and you know when you first hear that you think whoops but when you taste it it's beautiful very nice but we and we do all that there and, and have some nice tasting it's good it's a nice place yeah there's definitely not a shortage of amazing foods in the Tasmanian region and what we try and do as much as possible on any of our expeditions and I'm sure Tom can attest to this being a you know a regular guest lecturer um the food on board is absolutely amazing um we do try and incorporate as much of that local produce as possible so obviously when we're in Tasmania we try and you know bring as much of that local fresh produce on board you know try and get all those local oysters which are absolutely out of this world <laughs> um, and then of course regular cheese boards and things like that throughout the night as well so yeah they definitely um do bring a whole lot of that beautiful experience on board as well yeah, it gets spoiled there it's very nice definitely um, so you probably remember me mentioning at the beginning that we did have some of our other themed expeditions um, this just kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of some of the other trips that we do do um, so our 10 night coastal trek, which we kind of just covered a little bit for you, um, is our Hobart to Hobart expedition that we're kind of just going over for you. Um, but we do do a more active one. So you know, if you're more inclined to doing those big hikes, like the, the fluted capes, et cetera, that Tom mentioned there, um, or even on Mariah Island, we've got um, the Bishop and Clerk walk, which is quite an intensive one. Um, some of the walks can be anywhere up from, you know, five to seven hours. So 
Um, if you love your extreme hikes, then we've got your coastal treks, uh, which are fantastic. And we do, um, depending on the year, one or two of those. Um, we've got, as I said, the Sydney to Hobart Yacht Race, which we follow. Um, and then I've got our fantastic Tasmania circumnavigation. So, I mean, there's so much to explore in Tasmania. It's so hard to, to cover it all in 10 days. Even in 16 days, you've still got, you know, so much that you need to see. Um, so we've added in sort of a little bit of that northern area um, to those remote island groups, which most people don't get to see often. Um, and then some pockets along that um, that rugged coastline there along the, the west coast there as well. So, yeah, a couple of little theme ones which we do, um, just which we do from time to time throughout the years. And so as, um, as I said, you know, food on board is sensational. Um, you've got a lot of adventurous hikes that you're doing on board. So you definitely do get fed really well um, on board. Um, everything's included for you in terms of your lunch, um, your meals, like your, your dinner, your breakfast, morning teas, afternoon teas. Uh, we include with lunch and dinner your house spirits, house beers and also house wines as well. Um, and then outside of those hours, you can always just purchase them from the the multiple bars that we've got around the ship. Um, to comply with um, COVID as well, we've sort of changed a little bit of the dining on board. Um, so you'll find that we've done away with the buffet experiences um, as you would know a typical buffet. And rather than having a buffet, they're more of a, um, like a platter style. So we're still doing our signature seafood nights or signature nights, but they're just doing them as a table or a, a group type scenario instead, um, just for, to mitigate that, that risk. Um, and we've also opened up a lot of our outside dining as well. So not only do we have our beautiful indoor um, dining room, but we've also got our, our lovely um, alfresco dining outside, which we've also opened up as well. I think this is probably one of my favorite spots is um, the bridge. I'm sure you've seen many of people come into the bridge there, Tom, and reading the parts. Yep, that's a good spot. People like to sit up there and have a little chat and, um, you know, see where they're going and what, you know, see what's coming up in front and, you know, see if there's any dolphins and whatever. And of course, you know, some people get really intense with the navigation and all the equipment. They want to check it out. And uh, the, the, it's, it's um, uh, it, people are welcome in the bridge to see it. Um, it's a good spot. Really good. Yep. Love it. And there's plenty of open areas too. So that's what, you know, we've got a bit of a, um, a signature thing with our ships where, you know, we've, we've designed them so that there's ample outside experience while you're on board. So, you know, you can see in the bridge those beautiful, um, you know, wall to wall uh, windows. We've sort of incorporated that through the other areas of our ship as well. Um, you've got your bridge lounge, um, your guest um, lecture lounge there up the top. Um, so you've if you're on one of Tom's expeditions, I'm sure you'll hear Tom um, doing one of his fantastic presentations. Um, so we, we do multiple um, expedition leader presentations or guest lecturer presentations throughout the cruise. Um, and they're designed to kind of give you a little bit of um, extra information on the, the locations that we're going to and help you sort of better appreciate the region that we're in. That's true. These are your little favourite exploration vessels. <laughs> yep. So we've got. Um, yeah, this is a really good setup with uh, coral expeditions. That a lot of people comment on on how how it makes their crew really um, just so accessible. You know, places are um, you can hop in. You know, easily access the Explorer and a slower down with a hydraulic um, lift into the water, and you know. There's no waiting round. It's just wonderful. And off you go. And we do commentary while you're you're on it when we go. So we all feel like this, you know, we're all going together to see a um, place. And of course, sometimes we drop people off to do a walk, and then the remainder um, who aren't don't feel they want to do a walk that day can do a nice cruise, and we cruise around, and, you know, with a guest lecturer and look at other things. It's great. Good system. Yeah. yeah, they've thought of everything with these little vessels. I mean, you've got your. Um, marine toilet I guess is the nice way to refer to it so marine toilet at the back there um, and then of course you've got uh, guest commentary so we've got the microphone equipments on board etc because um, you wouldn't want to miss one of 
our guest lecturers or expedition leaders some um, interpretive talks as we're going around. So I'm factored in everything really when it comes to um, these purpose-built vessels. So they're unique to us, which is awesome. It's true, very good. It's good system. Yeah. Yep. We uh, do, uh, sunset drinks is uh, something we, if we get the opportunity to do it, is really, really great. Um, and of course, we can do some kayaking in some of those locations. We mentioned that. And of course, the, the excursions are um, a real big feature of, of the trip, that's for sure. You know, it, sometimes you get to the point where you don't know, there, there'll be a couple going, you know, a cruise or a, or a walk, and you think, oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And you wish you'd be on boat. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, there's plenty to do, and it's just fascinating. Yeah, never, never a shortage. <laughs> um, so our little vessel that we do our Tazzy on is our Coral Discoverer. Um, so you probably remember me say that we've actually capped her at 60 at present, um, but typically we would have the 72 passengers on board. Um, we've got a combination of staterooms, so some being bridge deck balcony staterooms, we've got six of those. Uh, then we've got our promenade category A staterooms, which have our picture windows. And then following down from that, we've got um, main deck, which have portal windows. So when they design the ship, um, as I said earlier, they've, they've designed it so that, you know, you've got maximum immersion into the, the beautiful surroundings around us. So all of our rooms will have a, um, a window or a portal or a balcony of some description. Um, and none of them are inside facing. They're all outside facing. So you've got and plenty of opportunity to take in the surrounds. Um, and this is our beautiful dining room. So really relaxed dining experience as well. It's kind of like a communal style of dining. So, you know, you don't have to regularly, um, you know, sit at your own allocated table every time. You're welcome to go wherever you wish in the dining room. Um, and then as you're, you're dining, it's not uncommon to be, you know, cruising through a beautiful area and you've got your Tasman Peninsula cliffs that you can see through your left window or your sunset through your, you're right. So yeah, they've definitely um, kept in mind to, to keep all of that outside in, in the creation. So love the way that they've done that. A couple of um, just state rooms for you, just to give you a little bit of an idea of how they look. So you've got your bridge deck balcony state rooms up the top left for you. So really nice and spacious. Um, your promenade sets so your picture windows there. You can see that they're a really large window. So plenty of opportunity to see the world outside. Um, you've got your main deck A down in the bottom left corner there, which is your portals, and then your main deck B, um, which is your portals as well. Um, so a slightly smaller room configuration in your main deck B. Um, but equally, all is beautiful, really nice, relaxed type of feel. Um, she got refurbished. Uh, she was built in 2005. We got refurbished only in 2016. So she's still lovely and fresh. She's probably one of my faves. <laughs> What's your thoughts, Tom? On uh, Coral Discoverer? Yeah. I love it. I, I, yeah. I, I always put my hand up to go on, on uh, Coral Discoverer, yeah. the CD as we call it. Yeah. <laughs> A lovely ship. And, um, yeah, it's lovely and intimate, definitely intimate. Yeah. Um, I know I, we don't have loads of time, everyone, and, um, you know, it's hard to cover up everything um, in a short period of time, but absolutely, if you do need any more info, you can always... Um, contact our friendly reservations team or myself. Um, you've got also a little link down the bottom you can see highlighted there for Coral Connections. Um, that's a great way to stay up to date with, you know, some of our, our news stories or, um, you know, we do some, some beautiful um, media stories and things like that that they do share in there. Um, and then also keep an eye on our special offers um, because we do have a couple of offers at the moment um, for Tasmania where you've got... Um, a flexible deposit where we've got 14 days um, for your deposit for you instead of your usual seven. Um, we've also got a reduced solo supplement um, with that one um, and also complimentary deposit protection. So just remember to mention those two reservations if you are making any bookings. Um, yes, yeah, so you're welcome to book um, with our friendly reservations team or, or via your, your travel agent. Yeah. So any questions, guys? I know that that's um, a, a bit of a whirlwind overview for you there, but um, anyone have any questions for myself or Tom that you might like us to go over for you? 
feel free to just chat, um, pop those in that little question and answer if you do have those. Everything, Tom. Very thorough. <laughs> and of course, uh, when you're on, when you're on, the show, we got one. <laughs> we got one. Yep. Uh, how physically fit do you need to be? Yeah. So, um, I mean, generally, what we require is, um, in case of an emergency, you need to be able to self evacuate unaided. You need to be able to navigate up and down stairs, etc. Um, and then always be able to sort of hold on to at least one handrail. We've got a couple of degrees of um, expeditions that we do. So some a little bit more active than others. So you can choose a, a softer version of, as opposed to you know, a, an extreme version. Um, so yeah, definitely a couple of um, options on board. So yeah, just need to be able to physically get about, so. Yes, and of course you can always do um, some cruises. And we always, always um, take the guests into consideration and what we can do that day and once that yes, certainly. Uh, most nice people will be able to, um, like, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And um, another question here was for special offers. Yeah, so on our website, you'll see along the very top, um, there's like a little bar across the top. You'll see the special offers tab uh, listed on the top there. Is there a need to be available the day prior to cruise leaving on 1st of January? Yeah, we always encourage everyone to arrive into. Um, whatever the departure date or location is, at least one day prior. Um, our reservations team will also send out documentation, et cetera. Um, so in line with the COVID safe plans, um, just bear in mind sometimes certain requirements might allow, you know, require you to be in one day prior and things like that for, um, you know, pre, um, pre registrations and things. So yeah, but our reservations team will be able to answer any of those questions for you as well. Okay, any other questions there, guys, or? No. Looks like that's all of them. Lovely. Well, thank you, everyone, for um, oops, for tuning in. Um, appreciate your time with that. And um, if you do have any questions, as I said, please um, feel free to touch base with either myself or Tom, uh, sorry, uh, myself or the reservations team. And uh, thanks Tom for joining us. It's a pleasure. I hope you see you. The first cruise I'm on is a circumnavigation. So um, that'll be good. Oh, there we go. So maybe that question about the 1st of January, um, you potentially might be on their voyage. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks again. And um, have a, a wonderful evening, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.